In this video, you're going to learn the basics of Vion Studio in these first 13 lectures of my full Vion Studio course. The following Vion tutorial is based on my own years of experience working with Vion Studio every day in my own animation video agency. At the end of this video, you'll be fully equipped to start making your own professional animation videos in a fast and efficient way. Now let us jump right in. You start a new project by clicking Make a Video. And as you can see here, Vyond offers three different styles of animation. You have the whiteboard animation, the business friendly, and the new contemporary style. You only have access to the contemporary style if you have a Vyond professional subscription. It actually doesn't matter that much what you choose here, because you can just switch between the different styles in the actual editor. I wouldn't recommend mixing up the different styles that much, because as you can see, they're very different. But now you know the option is there, and in some circumstances, it actually makes sense to borrow a little bit from the other libraries. But we will get back to that later. In this course, we are primarily going to work with the contemporary style, but if you don't have access to that, I recommend using Business Friendly. Let's start by looking at the functionalities in the upper left corner. You can begin by giving your video a title. Then we have the first icon here. This is where you can import all kinds of file formats. This can be anything from a portrait of your mother-in-law to music that you composed yourself on a ukulele. There are endless possibilities of what you can upload here to make your video super customized and special. The next icon is characters and they are divided into different categories. Each one contains a series of pre-made characters. You can also make your own characters, but we'll return to that in a later session. Then you have all the props, and there are loads and loads of those. You can also search if there's something specific you're looking for. The search function is maybe not the world's greatest, so if you have a Sunday where you don't know what to do, then I recommend just spending the time on scrolling through the whole thing to get a really good idea of what is in there and what universes you can work within. That's pretty much the only option you have for getting the full overview. Next up, you have the charts menu, where you can make, you guessed it, charts, graphs, diagrams, visualizing the data you put in. Then you have texts, which is divided into three different categories for a reason I don't know, because you can just change the text however you want. So why they divided it into three categories, I never really figured out. Last but not least, we have sound. Here you have background music and sound effects. It seems pretty random what's in here. Some of it is really useful, and a lot of it not so much. It seemed like the person who did the sound effects didn't spend the time on going through the props library to see what would make sense to make sound effects for. I would really recommend importing sound effects and background music from other places around the web instead of using the ones in Beyond. But it's a good place to start, so go through the list so you know what's in there. In the upper right corner, you have the option to swap the theme template you're working on. You do that by clicking Swap, and then you will get an overview of all the different categories and themes that Vion has. Each category contains a series of templates that you can customize as much as you want. As an example, you can change the background. The contemporary style has patterns and locations as the two different categories. As always, you have the option to change between the different animation styles. Let's try this one. Here you change the background color. They say green is good for the eyes. I don't know how healthy this one is. Might be a bit too much. This one is better. No eye injuries today. Here you have the option to change scene transitions. You can add camera movement. And the last icon gives you the option to change the duration of the scene. You can also change the duration of the individual scenes in the timeline, which I personally find much, much easier. But we'll go much deeper into the timeline in a later lecture. In the middle of the top bar, you see five icons. Undo, redo, copy, paste, and delete. Personally, I think it's much easier and faster to use keyboard shortcuts, and you probably know many of them from other programs. Beyond actually has a lot of shortcuts, and you find them all by going to help and searching for shortcuts. 
And then you click on the top one, the top FAQ, does Beyond Studio have keyboard shortcuts? Yes, they do. Lots of them. Go have a look at them all and use the ones you find useful. Down here, you can zoom out and zoom in. Last but not least, you have the fit to screen function, which will fit the size of the editor window to your screen size. When you click a prop, you will realize that some of the icons in the top right corner will change. You now have the option to replace this prop with whatever prop you choose. This makes a lot of sense. You can even replace a prop with a character. And in the contemporary style, you can change the color of any prop. In the business friendly style, you can only change colors of some of them for some reason. We are slowly turning this into a very strange bakery. I'm not sure I would buy anything in here. Anyways, you can add enter effect, motion and exit effect on any prop. The last icon is a menu where you can manually put in the position of your prop. When you see this menu and it seems confusing, then you should always remember that you can change the placement of the prop by just dragging and dropping it. So it's only for very specific placements that you would use this. When you click a character, you can see that the icons in the upper right corner change once again. The first one, swap, you probably get by now, gives you the possibility to swap your character with another one or with a prop. I told you he shouldn't have bought his lunch here. Let's quickly change that one back. Now we're getting to the interesting part, the actual animation. Click on the action icon and you will see a lot of categories with actions. Some of the categories contain a lot of actions, while others don't. Why this one, for example, has its own category, I don't know. Maybe because Beyond is expanding on these categories all the time. So you will, over time, see more and more actions coming in. Click the small play icon to see a preview of the action before you choose it. The small magnifying glass also lets you preview the action, but it also means that this action is not animated. It's static. All actions come with a predefined expression, but here you can actually alter this expression and this opens up for hundreds of different combinations. You also get to choose the direction of the character's face. Should he turn his head left, right, or should he face the camera? As I mentioned earlier, Beyond gives you the option to upload your own sound and voiceover. And if you use the add dialogue feature, Beyond will automatically synchronize the character's mouth movements with the sound file you upload. This is a pretty cool feature that makes it look like the character is actually speaking the voiceover. And finally, you have the option again to add enter effect, movement and exit effect. The last menu lets you manually put in values for position, size and rotation. Welcome back to the world's worst sandwich bar, where we will now look at what happens when you right click on a character. Here you can copy and paste, but as we talked about before, use the keyboard shortcuts. Then there's this one, group. If you choose two or more characters, you have the possibility to group them together. This is a really, really cool feature. I'll get back to that later. Then there's the mask. This is also a cool function and I will also return to this one later. Then you can flip things. Works like this. Here you can bring characters forward and backwards. All the way to the front or all the way to the back. This is, by the way, the same for props, where you can move them one step at the time, or all the way to the front, or all the way to the back. This guy is having a really bad day. Remember, there are keyboard shortcuts for moving things back and forward. Delete is the last function. You can also do that on your keyboard directly, so do that and save you a little bit of effort and time. When you want to create a new character, you go up in character and from here you have two different options. Either you can use an existing character as your point of departure and edit that one, or you can start from scratch and that is what we will do. In order to create a character, you have to leave the Vion Studio, so click save and go. 
Now you are choosing an animation style for your character and here you actually can't blend the different styles. So here you actually have to make a decision. Business friendly is the only style that allows you to make children. That, that sounded wrong, but uh, yeah. We'll just go ahead and choose the contemporary style. Here there's absolutely no reason why you have to choose a body type because you get the exact same options with both ones. The character creator is divided into the following categories. There's head, where you can alter the hair and the skin color and other things. Then there's top, where you can choose his clothing. Bottom is all about pants and shoes. Then there's accessories. And the last one is character settings where you can only alter the height of the character right now. Thus, we succeeded in creating a new character and conducting a sex change at the same time. When you're done, then use the preview function to see how your new character does different actions. I would recommend that you go through the face, the top, the bottom, the accessories and all that Go through the library of the different possibilities to get a really good overview of what's in there. When you are totally done and you're satisfied with your new character, you click save. When clicking save, you can return to the studio and continue making your video, or you can create a new character. If you click on the big plus down in the timeline, you get the chance to add one of the many templates. As we've touched upon earlier, Beyond contains a lot of different templates you can choose from. Some of them are complete environments, while others are more conceptual, like this one. Everything in every template can be replaced and customized as you want. You can even save a scene as a template and use it later, or you can share it with your team if you have a Beyond professional subscription. Let's take a closer look at the timeline down here. The timeline is your overview over scenes, actions, and transitions. You can see your voiceover, your music, and your sound effects, and anything else you want to stuff into your scenes and your video. By clicking the small arrow down here, you unfold all the effects you've added to the scene. The green ones are enter and exit effects, while the blue ones are motion paths added to props, characters, and camera movement. You can alter the duration of an effect by pulling these small squares left and right. You can also do it in the upper right corner as I showed you before. Here you just type in the values you want manually. As you can see here, you can also change the order of the scenes by just dragging and dropping them. If you click on the small arrow to the right of a scene, you get three options. You can add template, which is exactly the same as just clicking the big plus. You can add a blank scene, which is what it is. And the coolest one, continue last scene. Be aware of the fact that the start positions of all characters and props will be the end position from the former scene. That doesn't make immediate sense, I know, so we'll return to that in a later lecture. It's a super useful function, so you can look forward to that. Let's take a closer look at the soundtracks down here. It looks like there's only one, but actually there are multiple. This gives you the opportunity of adding background music as well as sound effects and combine and mix them so it fits to your animations. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a few here. You can always right click a soundtrack or a sound effect to hit play and it will play from the beginning without playing the actual animations. Or you can choose play from and you'll play the track or the sound effect from the exact point where you right clicked. Also without the actual video playing with it. You can split sound files by right clicking and choosing split. And by clicking settings you can alter the volume of the sound clip. You can actually put the volume of the sound clip to higher than 100% but this might mess with the quality of the sound. If you click here, you can set the enter and exit fading of a sound clip and see how long its duration is down here on the timeline. See how a change in the duration of a fade will affect how it's visualized down here on the timeline. 
So get yourself down to the rehearsal studio and lay down a smooth saxophone track for you to use in your animation video. Or you can just find something on the internet, it's your choice. If you ever need it, you can add one camera per scene. You can put in values for size and placement right here, or you can just pull the corners of the camera to choose a part of your scene you want to include. See how the miniature thumbnail down in the timeline changes when you choose different parts of the scene? Pretty cool. If you didn't notice, this is how it looked before, and this is how it looks now. Click on the camera icon once more to add camera movement. The orange camera is the starting position, the yellow camera is the ending position. You can use this feature to zoom out in your scene or zoom in. Or maybe you want to add panning from right to left. Here you can choose if you want the camera movement to last the whole scene or you want to choose your own delay and duration. As you can see, these elements are now their own separate object. I can choose to group these elements by either dragging this square over them to select them, or you can select them one by one by clicking the first one, hold down shift, click the next one and continue until you've selected all the elements you want. When you've selected the elements you want, you right click on one of them and choose group. Now this is happening. When I move one, they all move as a group. This is extremely useful in a lot of different situations. If you want to reposition one of the grouped elements, you just double click, move it, click away from the scene, and now it's grouped together with the other ones again. If you want to, you can always ungroup them again by right clicking on one of the elements and choose ungroup. Now we've come as far as to the mask function, and it's almost just easier to show you than talk about it. If we then select both of these elements and right click, we can now choose mask. And now what happened? He had his legs cut off. Now I can double click on the guy and move him around in different positions until I'm satisfied and then just click anywhere. All elements can be grouped, but uh, not all elements can be masked. The mask function only works with certain elements and which ones it is, is kind of a mystery. But as a rule of thumb, the screens and frames in the contemporary style do work with the mask function. And also if you search for shapes, it is my impression that most of these work too. But to know for sure, there's really no way around trial and error, so have fun with that. That's it for section 1. I look forward to showing you how to use these features in section 2.